Welcome, welcome, welcome to another video. I'm Brett Papa with the great Joey Landreth. Hey! Now, the cool thing about you, and what I was most excited about, is you actually write really good songs. Thanks. Right? I, I get a lot of great players here, and you know, they're in great bands, and they're great session guitar players or whatever, but it's very rare that people actually like are their own, you know, albums and write songs and tour on their own stuff. So this is, it's good stuff. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Okay, so let's get it out of the way. Everyone always wants to know, how do you tune? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, maybe this will this will finally solve my DM clog. Okay, right. Uh, I, I use OpenC, which is the same as OpenE. So You're it's right. tune 151351. Uh, it's two full steps down from OpenE. And um, I landed on that because a really good buddy of mine from Toronto is a his name is Champagne James Robertson James Robertson but he but he has a cool nickname okay right when you have a cool nickname yeah, you have to use it absolutely um, we were at a festival together and he was like man you play slide I play slide you should check on my slide guitar and he and he had this this really cool telly tuned down to open C yeah and I played it for all of fifteen seconds and was yeah like, oh man this is the coolest thing and I couldn't stop thinking about it and so I called him a couple of weeks later and was like man would it would it bother you <laughs> then i'm gonna totally steal your thing. yeah exactly and he was like no man i mean i got it there's there's a local guy here i can never remember his name he has a residency at the bluebird or he did for a long time yeah he plays an open c okay and that's where james got it from oh, it was classic. from that guy yeah and so i borrowed it from james through this this cat and right. i think there's a lot of other other people who use it too, yeah right? um that's that's kind of where i got it and i started i started playing in that tuning and and uh um haven't haven't really looked back. I just, yeah. it just it, it just feels really good under the hands. There's and something about when you tune guitars down. It just sounds right. Yeah, even E flat. Yeah, even E flat is is better to me than yeah. Than e. No, that would be my my first law as president. Like everything <laughs> has to be E flat or lower. I hereby declare <laughs> exactly <laughs> by decree. Um, okay, so make sure you check out. I'm going to leave all of Joey's. Uh, Socials below. You got. I'm assuming you got all that stuff. But is it better for your website? Is that? Do you get a website? No, no, no. Socials are great. Okay. Socials are great. But I feel like the website is just old tech. Is it old? Yeah, yeah. You do, you have to have one. Yeah. But uh, people <laughs> are like you didn't know, you didn't update stuff on your website. I'm like I can't believe you're still looking at the website. <laughs> right. uh, shame on you. Shame on you. <laughs> also, seriously, check out the albums, like listen to the albums. They're really, you know, what's what I appreciated most is it's like old school songwriting, but new school sounds like you, oh, you experiment with the guitar sounds and like get really cool. It doesn't sound like you're trying to just make up a new sound. It just fits, but the, the tunes sound classic. So it's like this cool fusion of modern and classic. It's freaking awesome. And then you sing like a mother. God bless your heart. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, well thank you very much. I appreciate it. I my my whole sort of philosophy is uh is really just chase the muse around and, yeah. and you know on our latest record, it's called Come Morning, came out a couple months ago. It's just like it doesn't have a ton of guitar playing on it. Not, yeah. not like some of our previous records. And it it's not at all because I'm not still madly in love with the guitar, but it was just every time I'd sit down to do something like super guitar y. Yeah. I just wasn't, I yeah. just didn't feel right. And I, you know, I'd go to dial up like my fuzz face through a crank damp and big room tone was like, eh. You know, it's funny. I think as people um, become better songwriters too, they just, the guitar drops back. It doesn't become as important anymore. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it's like, it becomes big picture rather than. Yeah. And that's a, that's a really good observation. And maybe that, that might be true for me here on this record. But I think for me, a big, a big part of guitar playing is this, this is the language in which I'm most fluent. Yeah. And so it's easier for me to express myself on the guitar. But I mean, during the pandemic, I spent two years pretty much in isolation with very rare exception to like some friends and family and stuff and hanging out in the studio and yeah. just like experimenting with stuff and, and, you know, developing some more confidence and I do a lot of the engineering on our recordings and, oh cool and most of my engineering chops are just like well, I wonder what happens if you plug <laughs> right. this into this and like oh ooh. <laughs> yeah you know sometimes it's great and sometimes it's not and and uh I leave the really challenging stuff to to uh my buddy Paul Yee who's a great engineer okay and he 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 has done a lot of engineering recording like drums and, and stuff like that. Oh, cool. um, but on this record, I did a lot, I did a lot more. And I feel like maybe the, the sort of creative sort of uh, itch was getting scratched 
by a lot of other things. I also played all the keys on the record. So oh, it was nice. like, so there's, yeah, by the time it was like, okay, let's do, let's cut some guitar solos. And it was like, yeah, <laughs> can, we, can we call somebody else? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Oh, totally. Yeah. That's so funny. Dude, okay. So before we move on, just get the Bonnie Raitt story out because that's freaking amazing. Yeah. I yeah. mean, especially being like a, I mean, I know that you play more than slide, but I think a lot of people know you for playing slide yeah. and that's just insane. It's crazy. Well, the, the, the craziest part of, about it for us is that like, if you were to sift through my parents' record collection when we were growing up and the, like the music that sort of, um, really defined my childhood, yeah. the, the top 10 records would have been probably two or three Bonnie Raitt records. Oh, like, so this hits she, huge She's a part you. of our musical DNA, yeah. yeah, in a big way. And we got to meet her, the, sort of the story begins at the Winnipeg Folk Festival, which is where I'm from, Winnipeg. Um, and uh, it begins there in 2014, and she was the headliner. We were the first band on mm -hmm. the main stage, which is like a coveted spot, and lo like local bands don't always get yeah. a spot on main stage for the folk folk fest but usually when they do it's it's the the opening spot of the right. opening main stage night so we were we were the band that got the we, you know we won the lottery that year and we were opening the whole night off and bonnie was closing and we have we do have some mutual friends uh who had said who had bumped into her at austin city limits i think and said oh, nice. hey you know my boys up in canada are, are opening for you and you know if you if you have the time and the energy go and catch them and she did she yeah. gave us his play and then after our set, her tour manager came over and said, Barney would like to speak with you. And we were like, oh. You we are like, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, and we hung out with her for like, like an hour or two. And, and she just like, we chatted and shared stories and she talked and we listened and she, we talked and she listened. It was super cool. We sort of hit it off. And then at the end of the night, she, um, she pulled me aside and said, hey, I'm always looking for songs and I really like your guy's sound. So if you have anything, you have any songs that aren't going anywhere in your in your collection, like let me know and here's my email address. And at that time, we had just released our record, which had nine songs on it because we had nine songs. Yeah. Like, we did not have 10 songs <laughs> and one got so cut. Oh my God. Like, we wrote nine songs and we're like, quick, let's make a CD. So <laughs> I, sent, I, I sent her our record and said, you know, if any of this speaks to you, just take it. Don't even ask, just it's yours. Yeah. And uh, we stayed in touch over the years. Like I would send her a Merry Christmas or yeah. like, here's, here's our new record. Let me know what you think. And then actually Zach from Mythos yeah. said, man, uh, I, just got a, I just got a call uh, from Kenny Greenberg. Yeah. He's, he's on a Bonnie Raitt session. And oh, that's right. He told, yeah, yeah, he was talking about that. Okay, and he's right. like, apparently they're kicking around a Brothers Landreth song. Shut up. And like, we've been around long enough to know that like, you don't get excited about no. something until somebody hands it to you yeah. in shrink wrap. Absolutely. And so it was like, wow, that, what an honor that they're, they're kicking our tune around. And Kenny had called Zach because apparently Bonnie said, Joey's got a pedal. You gotta go get his pedal. Yeah. So, so Zach called and was like, I have no idea what song. I have no idea what they're working on or what, but just thought you'd think that was cool no way. so that was like in the summer last year yeah and then it was just like just in the back of my mind like i wonder i wonder yeah. what they cut i wonder if it's gonna wind up on the record and then i got an email in december from bonnie's manager saying hey we we cut made up mind and not only is it going on the record but it's the first single and it's just been like <laughs> it was just like my 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 like my brother and i've been doing a lot of press for the record and people, yeah. people are asking about this and they're yeah. like, so what does it feel like it's like we, we did we never in a million years were like one day one of our heroes would cut one of our songs. Yeah. It's not even a thing that you dream about that you entertain like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if, because it was just never a possibility. Yeah. So we're still very much reeling from it. And Bonnie is like, she is such a class act. Like all the interviews that she's doing, she talks about it. She mentions Winnipeg. She talks about the festival. She's really, really big on uh, like sharing her platform with people. Yeah. And she, it's, it's just been incredible for us. I mean, just in terms of, cause I mean, like in the early days of the band, there was, a, there was always people going like, you guys are playing like this sort of quintessentially American music and mm -hmm. you're from Canada. Like what, yeah. what right do you have? It's like, well, you know, we still have record stores and the radio <laughs> totally. and TV and stuff. And have you heard of this thing called the internet? Yeah. It is bonkers. Yeah. Um, but there was always a little bit of like a little bit of that kind of vibe. And I think just, you know, Bonnie sort of saying, I like this. Yeah. Has really, really given us a little bit of street cred, which is which That is, is bonkers. insane. Yeah. Oh my God. How yeah, cool I'll, I'll never get over it. Yeah. And I, no. I, I listen to the song now and it's like, this is, <laughs> this is, this is, this is never going to be a Brothers Landers song yeah. again. It's always going to be a Bonnie Raitt tune. So. 
It's wild, it's man. Okay, so slide. We got to talk about it because okay. you freaking are amazing at it. Where does one begin? Patience. <laughs> right. Yeah. Humility. Mark. Yeah, yeah. Right. I feel like slide guitar is very similar to like beginner violin. Is that <laughs> no matter what you do, it your family's gonna hate you. Yeah, it's yeah. not good. Yeah. Um, I, I always I always suggest that people people start with just messing around with either the major scale or or a scale that you're really familiar with that you can tell you're familiar with it enough that you can tell if something's out because yeah. intonation is 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 big and it's something that you can definitely manipulate for good but if you're not aware of it it can be evil yes <laughs> so I, I i you know i often recommend that people start with droning an open string mm -hmm. uh, and then playing Are, are you directly over the fret? Is that how you get the intonation? Or yeah, is that not? That's where you start. That's where you start. And a lot of a lot of sort of um, expressive stuff comes with playing with those lines. You know, like a major third, if you if you hit it slightly under versus right on top, will change sort of the immediacy of how something sounds. So you can yeah. really start to play with that. But I, I would start with trying to aim for right over top of the fret. Yeah. Who who would be a good, simple um, person to listen to? Like if somebody wanted to go down the slide road and wanted to be able to play some tunes with some good but easy. Uh, Can you think of anybody off the top? Or do you just like ripping? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just pretty much go straight to shredding, right? So, <laughs> totally. um, start with the Eric Trucks, work your way backwards. Yeah, yeah, work your way backwards from that. <laughs> From that beginner. Uh, you know what the truth is for me is that I didn't spend a lot of time digging into um, sort of the quintessential slide yep. folks um, because I, I came to slide after after I was already working as a professional guitar player. So I okay. had chops, I had ideas of the yeah. sounds that I wanted to make. So I, I like my in my DNA, there's not a lot of like Elmore James, like yeah, Elmore. yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. Or, or Muddy Waters or something like that. Because that's never been done. That's, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, like, th and, and those those things, which I think a lot of people would sort of imagine to be like simpler slide, like it's really complex in its own way. Yeah. Rhythmically. Yeah, and, totally. And so it's it's really something that's it's kind of tough and there's not really a great place to start. So for me, as like, if I'm giving somebody a lesson or I'm offering advice, I always say, start with things that are really familiar. Do you give lessons? I do. I do, do. you really? Yeah, yeah. Not 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 a ton lately. It's yeah. been really, really busy with the with the record and touring and stuff, but I do, I, I have done a fair amount of Skype okay. lesson stuff. So. Is that, so is that something you want people to like know or? <laughs> well, yeah, I, I mean, I know I was, I was, I You're was setting yourself up right now. Yeah. So. <laughs> I was making fun of it before, but uh, on my website, yeah. if you go to joeylanders.com slash lessons, oh, cool. uh, whenever there's availability, it'll come oh, out on cool. the calendar. Yeah. Okay, cool. So there's there wouldn't be any availability right yeah. now, but if if you're interested, just keep your eyes peeled on that. And oh, cool. And and I do open up uh, spaces when I've got time, but um, yeah, or something like Amazing Grace or Happy Birthday or something yeah. that you can really you is really recognizable, so that you, again you can kind of tell when something's out or off. Yeah. And then you can kind of start to make adjustments. The hardest thing for me about playing slide is getting comfortable with having it on your hand. Yeah. So starting with something like that. Um, not trying to bite off too big a piece. Yep. Um, because what I find with a lot of people is they go, I want to learn like the Derek Trucks Sacred Steel Good or, luck. you know, like <laughs> some of these sort of sounds. Yeah. Well, that, that's like, that's like level a bajillion. Yeah. You know, um, and, and folks will get discouraged and kind of yeah. give up on it. So you got to start with something simple. Uh, I always recommend if you've got a guitar that you can kind of dedicate to it, starting by raising your action up or using a heavier, heavier okay. gauge string yeah. or some combination of the two, okay. um, definitely will give you a bit of a leg up. If you try to play slide on, on your regular working axe that's got nines or tens or yeah. even, you know, for some folks, 11s on it, you're going to, you're not going to have a great time. Yeah. But I mean, somebody like Derek Trucks is, has a reputation of using 11s and a really quite low action. Yeah. But he's, you know. He's Derek Trucks. He's a master. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So yeah. start starting with you know something like that to give you a leg up, um, and then but the practical like real practical slide advice, uh, right hand muting is okay. massive. So for me, what it looks like is my thumb. If I'm playing on the high E string, mm -hmm. even though I'm tuned to C, I still call it the high E string. Yeah. 
uh, my thumb rests on the B string and then mutes everything underneath. Okay. So then I can... Uh, and then as I switch strings, this whole sort of muting yep. mechanism moves around. Okay. And it, just take your like take your time. Start with one string at a time. Yeah. Uh, I mean, even w like with non-slide stuff, I often recommend if you're learning a scale, don't start by trying to learn a whole horizontal position. Learn it on one string. Get to know the individual steps, the the distance from one to two, two to three, three to four, yep. whatever it is. Get to know it. Um, sort of intimately on one string and that that gives you a bit of a leg up when you start to try to figure something out you know in a in a more wide way at least that's that's kind of my no that's great approach. um I, I remember when i worked with tim pierce a bunch he he said that too he like you know figuring out how to do melodies on one string because it, it has a cool sound too you know because you have that you can work the same timbre of that one string mm -hmm. you know and sometimes like if you're going up on the g string or a d string and you're going up the neck it 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 has a cool sound and it stays full or whatever. I mean, yeah. it, whatever string it's on, but it's, yeah, it's good because, you know, people get locked in that scale way of thinking. Shapes and, they, shapes and patterns, which are really, which are really great and useful on the yeah. guitar, but can really quickly become, become yeah. hurdles. Yeah, for sure. You know? And I find like, if you, like how many times I've, I've taught people who are like pros or yeah. session guys or whatever and, and, and go, okay, play me a major scale on one string and they always go, okay, yeah, no problem. Ah, hang on. Ah, hang on. You know, <laughs> right. you know, you're like, okay, stop, slow down, think about it. What are the notes in the major scale? Okay. Like one, two, three, four. You're not gonna five, get six, in trouble. Seven. Yeah, 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 that's right. You're yeah. like, slow down. Yeah, exactly. But it also takes you out of that, um, that realm of like muscle memory, which again, it's great. Yeah. It's a great thing to lean on, but um, you're not actively creating something when you're when you're just playing shapes and patterns that you remember. Yeah, you know, and and that's one of the reasons why I play always in an open tuning is because, um, you know, my my first sort of 10, 12 years as a working guitar player in standard tuning, I found myself getting you know stuck in these ruts, and it was always like, ah, I just play the same thing over and over and over. The, if you if you make a change to something, you know, change your change your approach or for me it was changing my tuning. Mm -hmm. I couldn't lean on those things anymore. And I yep. had to, I had to like, I actually had to actively be present and mindful yeah. of what I'm playing. Yeah. Because if I'm not, I'm going to play some real soggy notes, <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, so, um, and a big, a big part of sort of my, like my philosophy is, is, um, actually like, I, I'm more concerned about mindfulness while I'm playing than practicing like scales and patterns and sure. things like that. It's just trying to be, trying trying to listen to myself while I play and respond to the things I play as opposed to going, okay, now I'm gonna play this shape in this lick. Now I'm gonna play this shape. Okay, uh, I'm gonna do this melodic minor thing I've been working on. Right. You know what I mean? And instead of doing that, just like, going, line. If I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, play a note and go, hmm, I wonder what the most ne most interesting next note is yeah. going to be. Anyway. Um, okay, so, you know, one of the things I appreciate, especially about people who um, are really good at slide, is the expressiveness with it. So what's a way, I know, like, you can, like, lag into notes and, like, you know, make it really quick. It seems like it's, um, you have almost, you know, you expressive-wise and keeping a note and making it more vocal like it seems like it's almost easier to do it on a slide because you have that continuous For sound sure. and you can slide into something where you, that's really hard to mimic you know when you're not when you don't have something that can move minute amounts of pitch you know yeah i mean the best thing you can do for that kind of stuff is listen to any of the sacred steel gospel players okay campbell brothers Aub aubrey gent yeah uh aj gent who's uh, aubrey gent's son who's out of atlanta i think sounds and, like a metal band yeah, yeah it's yeah it's not couldn't be further <laughs> from it um but those those guys are like where uh they're so immersed in the tradition of that and they're that's where that began and yeah. that's that's i'm pretty sure where Derek trucks got that sound because okay. the the gents are from Florida, okay. I could be t completely misquoting this. Yeah. This is just something that somebody told me once. Well, give me, give us a couple examples of how to like start adding feel when you're playing slide. I mean, it doesn't necessarily matter what you play, but just like you know, I, I noticed you can come into notes slow and then add vibrato, or or just you know all the different little little nuances. When somebody can't move around, you, you know, proficiently on something, you can spend time learning how to make a note feel really sure, good. Sure, sure, sure. Well, one of the one of the big 
one of the big things that you can focus on is is getting in and out of notes. So, you know, if I'm playing the fifth, I can go, yeah, you know, something like that. So I'm sliding into the five from the four and then kind of exiting the fifth via the third. I wouldn't even think of that as three different notes. Yeah. To me, it's all about right. the, the fifth. Um, something that's super cool that I love is doing the exact same thing, but instead of getting to the five from the four, getting to it from the flat five. Mm. And then you can take that a step further and split the difference between the flat five and the four, and, and which would be considered an out of tune note or maybe even microtonal, but. Yeah. Like that's not really a pitch, but uh, when when you kind of like th that's I'm, I'm bouncing around everywhere. But that's the no, thing about like, slide guitar is that it's actually not necessarily about perfectly yeah. perfectly nailing the intonation, but it's about knowing where yeah. you can get away with something. And the, I, I was listening to um, to AJ Gent play, and there's this lick that that has vexed me forever, and it's this. And so that's like in the key of F playing three, two, one, three. And I like, I, I practice slow. If I play an F, are we going to be in tune? Sure, well, should be. Yeah, that's yeah. It. There you go. And I was listening to, to AJ play that, and I had this like, I had this breakthrough moment, and I realized that he's not, act, like if you slowed it down, he's not actually going. He's actually going. And if you slow it down, it's like, well, that's kind of weird. But if yeah. you speed it up. It's, <laughs> it's so awesome. It's great. Um, but it's, it's, a, it's kind of about like the, I think the beauty of slide guitar is, is it's actually about letting go of trying to nail the perfection yeah. that I definitely got really wrapped up in playing fretted and just just guitar period and it really just kind of throws all that out the window and, and it forces you to just kind of play uh from a more of an emotional place there are, you know there's times like you you can't play out of tune without yeah. it sounding bad you can contextualize something that's out of tune by surrounding it with things that are really in tune so yeah. if i play this note is not a note yeah but if i'm As long as I'm landing on a place sure. consistently, then it's all just a, it's all part of the greater good. Well, and it's kind of like, you know, when you, when you hear singers too, they're not, you know, well, I mean, good singers can, but it's often drifting into notes. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And, and it's the ear, like is the resolution is what matters. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, if you can get, you can go all the way down the rabbit hole when you start thinking about this stuff, but the harmonic overtone series, which is this, like, that's sort of how chord tones exist naturally in nature, just like floating around the world yeah. at, at any given moment. That major third is actually quite flat. Yeah. But if you play it like that, it sounds incredible. So good. But if I play it perfectly in tune, yeah. it's actually pretty sharp. But but like there's a time and place where like the really in tune third works because yeah. it makes things feel like they have forward yeah. motion. Yeah. And like so if I'm playing a ballad, I'll flatten the third. <laughs> but if I'm playing something, <laughs> if I'm playing something more rocking, yeah, it just gives it forward momentum. It's kind of like it's like the pitch equivalent of like playing on top or playing behind. Yeah. You can you can kind of manipulate the way something feels. If you play super on top, it makes things feel kind of anxious. If you play behind, it makes things feel lazy. What's like a good um what's like a good basic chord progression to play the where people could, in context could kind of What key do you like playing in? Uh, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Like Oh, you're one of those guys. <laughs> <laughs> I play it all 12. I can do anything good. Um just like let's play something that's maybe a little more like uh uh, a little more up tempo, and then okay. we'll, we can play something that's a little more okay. down tempo. And I'll, yeah. I'll just sort of make a, a few examples. What, what do you give me a key? What do you want? D. All right. <clears throat> Thank you. 
<laughs> I have an internal like I, I don't know why I, one four fives. I like it like I, my body just doesn't want to do it anymore. Just get antsy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I get it. <laughs> um, that's okay. So obviously, there's so much more going on than a, you know. I think a lot of people default to like pentatonic stuff. Mm. But the thing I really appreciate, I mean, obviously there is that in there, but God, it seems like you can, you can mess around with the notes. I don't know. I just, it, you know, and when I was younger, I, I was not that into slide, but as I get older, I'm like, there's just so much more like expression you can put in to the same thing. You know what I mean? Like what you were doing, getting in and out of notes or, or the different types of vibrato. It just, it's like more and more appealing. It's like, God, it's such like a straight emotional way to improvise, you know? Where Yeah, well, I think it, it kind of takes you into a bit of a three-dimensional realm in terms of like what you can manipulate. Cause yeah. I mean, it's not that you can't do cool, pardon me, expressive stuff fretted, but we yeah. just don't really think to, Yeah, you know? Cause it's like, think of all the great guitar players that we all kind of, um, we all, we've all transcribed and we've all yeah, learned right. and not all of it really lives in that realm. But I mean, if you think of somebody like Albert King, Stevie mm -hmm. Ray Vaughan, like the way, like, like this whole, like, uh, yeah, yeah that's, that is yeah. so microtonal Yep, and it's so out of tune, but if you played it like perfectly, no, it wouldn't sound the same. Yeah. yeah. It's really square. He's a great example. The, both of those guys are great examples. Cause it's like, that's almost all they do. You know what I mean? And there's so yeah. much, I, it's, it's almost like Indian music. There's so many notes in between the American scale notes <laughs> yeah. that really, um, like you were saying, it, you know, you can manipulate it. And if you're not landing on it and doing it all the time, it's just adds so much more expressiveness to it. That's really, really cool. Well, I mean, I think it, it like, it also challenges our, our idea of what, uh, tension and release means, because I think in, in sort of like Western European based classical music, tension and release is this. Yeah. You know, and unless something fits perfectly into that, but who says you can't go? <laughs> That's the same yeah. thing. It just makes you go. That's what I mean. It like, and then when you land on the one, you're like, ah. Oh. Yeah, totally. It's, it's all this. It's all kind of the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how long did it take you? I mean, you sound like from what you were playing without your slide that you're already a, you were already a really good guitar player by the time you hit getting into slide. But like, how long does it take to get? Perfect. Like, say you're already an intermediate player. Um, how long do you think it takes an average person to get proficient? I mean, you teach people, so you, you have to see people's progressions fairly regularly. Like, how long does it seem like it takes? Well, I mean, it, dep it just depends on the person yeah. and kind of how you're built and what you like to think about. Like, for me, I'm, I'm, very much a, I'm very much a curious person. I'm not, I have no formal training, but I'm very interested in music theory and things yeah. like that. And so for me, like, learning open tuning was just an exercise in problem solving it was yeah. like okay i understand how music works to on a on a fundamental level uh and i understand how the fretboard works so i just need to combine the things that i know mm -hmm. to help me figure out what i don't know and so for open tuning it started with the fact that in the center of this tuning is just a root position major triad one three five i'll play it in f actually it's a little easier to visualize so this is one and this is three and this is five so long as I understand where the surrounding scale tones, say for F major, would be in, in relationship to where the one and the three and the five is, I should be able to fill in the blanks for the rest of the scale. This is one, then two is a full step above. Mm -hmm. Three is here because of the triad. Mm -hmm. So four is a half step above. Five is here because of the triad. So six is a full step above. And then because the tuning has got three ones built into it, Oh, right. Then my one is here again, seven's a half step below. So what I, what I actually, when I'm teaching people to like start to try to visualize what's happening in, in this sort of new territory with open tuning is to understand where your half steps and whole steps are in the major scale. And that, cause that's, cause if there are no half steps and whole steps, then all you have is. Yeah. <laughs> Which is a cool scale, yeah. but it's not really the one we're after. So the half steps are really what it's all about. And the half steps are between three and four. Okay. And between seven and one. And those are also coincidentally 
the the leading tones which take us from the one chord to the four chord mm -hmm. and from the five chord back to the one chord so there's the one the dreaded one four five that you were mentioning before but so so if you can if you know that okay here here's here's my one and my three and my five in the key of f then if i know what a minor pentatonic is mm -hmm. then use with these three i don't i don't know anything else about the fretboard right now particularly yeah. uh but if I know that this is one, three, and five, then I know that one, flat three, four, five, flat seven, one. And it all kind of wraps around where those triads are. Yeah. So when I was working on this, I kind of discovered that that this triad, just this bar chord, was my key to unlocking this area on the fretboard. Okay. And when I wanted to work on the next area, I just inverted the triad to the next shape. <laughs> yeah, they do, they <laughs> do something pretty good. A, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I found that that was really something that helped me visualize a fretboard. And then it was just about finding other ways that I could make things relate to those triads. And then when I started to improvise, like without the slide on, mm -hmm. fretted, I found myself aiming for chord tones more often and like, and and concerning myself less with scale positions yep. and arpeggios and stuff. And it became a little more about, maybe too much so. I mean, to be honest, like sometimes I hear myself playing, I'm like, oh man. Play something else, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but I very much map out how what I'm playing and what I'm looking for tone tonally in terms of chord tones of what's happening underneath. Yeah, and like I'll use surrounding scale tones. Like if I'm playing over the one chord and I want it, I want it to sound like I'm not I'm not just being super literal playing notes from the one chord, but I also don't want it to sound like I'm playing a million miles away. Yeah, some weird. Right, like outside the box thing, I'll focus on the notes in the two chord. So if you can play me an F chord. Okay. And I'm only just focusing on the two chord. You can you could focus on other yeah. other chords to to give you a little bit of tension without it like bending your ear super far. So you focus on the notes of the two chord that resolve back to the or resolve back to the one. Yeah. Oh, that's super cool. And, yeah, and and extra bonus points if you can if you can avoid the one chord chord notes for <laughs> as long as you can stand. Okay, it. so so do it again. Let's see yeah. how long you keep it going. <laughs> I lost already. Yeah. Okay. It's such a cool, um, the intervals are so cool. You know what I mean? Like, I think a, a lot of times guitar players get bored because they just end up playing the same, they're, they're they get locked in, um, a, most people are afraid of the modes or any of that kind of stuff. So mm. like the thought of, oh God, I don't want to even go into those waters. But like the intervals that you start hearing, it's like, oh, that's kind of cool sounding. It's new. It's different, you know? Yeah. I mean, at the risk of like getting too, too like, uh, like floaty and hippie about it. There's I no think, risk here. I think there's, I think there's a big part of us that are, we're so comforted by our comfort zones and yeah. we all want to push beyond that. Yeah. But there's risk involved yeah, oh yeah. and there's vulnerability involved, which like, you know, your average dude holding a guitar is not like, I love to be vulnerable, <laughs> right. you know? And so there's a lot of that. Like I have lessons with people where I'm like, what would happen if you play the, your number one lick mm -hmm. and then at the very last minute, you just try something else. Yeah. And half the time people will just like, oh, I can't do that. Yeah. Like, well, why? Well, I might play a bad note. Okay. Yeah, you might. <laughs> right. okay. Man, I play a good <laughs> note too. Uh, but I like. I think. I think that there's a there's a real beauty in in embracing the um, the risk. Yeah. It gets really exciting, and half the time you do, you fall flat on your face, yeah. you crash and burn. Uh, but nobody that's, got good without doing that, though. I, sometimes those are my favorite moments. Yeah. Though. You know, like you just you you, wa you waltz into a situation and you start to play, and 
the the more open to making mistakes you are the better you get at turning them into magic okay you know yeah. and i and i think that that's like you know there's that great quote of like make a mistake play it twice it's jazz i feel like that's a bit that's a bit clunky and a little bit <laughs> inaccurate uh because i think i think we misuse it and we're just like oh yeah check this out yeah jazz you're like yeah. well no it's a little more sophisticated than right. that. but there is something in the idea of embracing uh embracing the unknown of potentially making a mistake and then having to fix it. Well, and that's the, the cool thing about um, the jazz thing too is uh, they're not afraid to do that. They just know how to land on their feet. And it's, it's all about playing in between, yep. in between strong, like a big, a big part of certainly early bebop is about weaving in and out of chord tones way more than scale theory is weaving in and out of chord tones and having strong chord tones land on strong beats. Yeah. And you just get so good. I'm, I'm not great at it. I love bebop, but I'm not, I'm not a great bebop player by any stretch. But you hear these great players like wander around the, the tonal center of things and just find really creative ways of contextualizing stuff. Yeah. And I think the, to me it's like, we were talking about you know tension and re resolution with with playing with um, pitch and stuff, but it's it is just all about like creating that moment that makes you go, and then creating the moment that makes you go. Ah, yeah, you know I mean? no, for sure. And it's and it's I actually think it's that simple. I remember watching a video with somebody talking about how they play over certain chords, mm -hmm. like a two five one chord progression, and he, and and he was saying um, Rich Brown, great bass player from Toronto. He was saying, yeah, I might use this mode over the two chord. I might use this mode over the, uh, the two chord or this one. I'll use these scales or these ideas over the one chord. But then he said, when I get to the five chord, I just kind of like play whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then he proceeded to demonstrate, okay, here's like he was naming scales. Like I'll play this scale over the five chord. And the way that he landed back on the one chord made everything make sense. And then he was just like, now I'm just going to play notes that have nothing to do with the five chord at all yeah but the way that he contextualizes them and lands back on the one chord made it totally work yeah and that would for me was like okay that's heavy you know like play five chord yeah like that's d flat major seven add nine it's got nothing to Bless do you. with the one chord or <laughs> yeah exactly the zoom tight <laughs> Uh, or the five chord, but it works. Yeah, you know? it goes back there, good. You know, uh, Tom Bukovac was just over here and he was talking about... Um, Clunk. Yeah. <laughs> he was talking about uh, doing, as long as the previous chord has one note from the chord you're going into, it's enough for the ear to be like... Sure. Can, they can hang on to it. He's like, as soon as there's no common notes you know then it like sounds really off but he's like there can be just one note in there and that's how kind of how he thinks about because he talked about the importance of just breaking out of typical thinking about progressions once you get to a certain point and yeah. just making music you know I, I think a big part of that is just is just confidence and bravery yeah you know it's not it's like there's nothing that uh, nothing that you can study in school or from lessons that's ne necessarily going to give you the confidence or the bravery to try something yeah like that. and like if you play something that is a clunker and you hear it and you're like, oh, you have to have the confidence to go, okay, but how can I fix that? Like, yeah. If I land on a, on a chord that's half a step away from where I meant to go, there's a way to make that work. Yeah. You just have to be brave enough to try it. Yeah. You know? And do it enough times to where you know how to get out of it quickly. I can't tell you how many times I've fixed a mistake by going. <laughs> You know, yeah, like, yeah, totally. Like, why not? It yeah. all works. Yeah, exactly. All right. So thank you very much, by the way. I want to get into songwriting with him. So if he has time, that would be amazing. But um, man, I, you know, it's funny. Like there's, there's so many, uh, watching you play, there's so many things. Like I want people to walk away with um, something that they can feel okay about going to experiment with slide. So if you're going to give them one last little kind of harangue, like who, who could they listen to? Like that would be a good first place to get used to that sound and that maybe not isn't just blues you know what I mean like yeah sure I mean other than your own band obviously because you guys are awesome yeah obviously the the the, the, <laughs> well, the, one guy, the right brother Landreth uh, Joey Landreth records uh, no no uh I mean my my heroes my favorite side players Ry Cooter Bonnie yeah. Raitt uh David Lindley is another great one um I cannot I cannot speak 
highly enough about AJ Gent and his dad okay. Aubrey. Um, to me, that that like that really like that's that crazy. that kind of stuff. That's where that's where that really comes from. Yeah, and uh, those guys. Um, I mean, you 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 go to a, a gospel church where there's a sacred steel player, and you'll hear the best slide guitar playing you've ever heard in your life, <sighs> and like. You know, it's terrifying. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I said, AJ Gent, he to me is about as as authentic as it gets in that department. So if you want to be inspired by that, go and follow him on Instagram or so, or something like that. But uh, um, I, I love I love Ry Cooter because he's these there's a lot of blues in there, but yeah. there's also so many other sounds, and yeah. he's like he's he's what he's one of my favorite just musical people aside it's from terrifying. being a guitar player yeah. i just i love what he does um who else kevin bright okay who is a he played in nora jones's band like oh, when, yeah, at the height oh, yeah. of nora it was yeah, like adam adam awesome. levy and, yep. and kevin bright and kevin's slide he's he's another canadian he's from toronto and his slide playing is check out check out the record faith cola okay the title track is the most insane slide guitar wizardry you've ever heard. And I, I learned it. Yeah. But I can't play it. <laughs> like the dude yeah. is from another planet. And then there's also, I can't remember the name of the record, but he covers the the sting tune every or the police every little thing she does with magic. Oh nice. And he does the craziest stuff on that too. So Kevin Bright, okay. uh, spelled B-R-E-I-T, I think. Okay. Or I E T. Can't remember. Awesome. One of the two. All right, so make sure you check Joey's links down below. You're out on tour, so look for him out on the road. The new albums, I mean, all your albums are awesome, but I was listening to the new album before you came over, and it is awesome. Like, if you want, like, good classic sounds, but I love your pedal board because it's, like, the biggest thing I've ever seen it's in my life. miles wide. <laughs> He's really good at making really cool, like, new sounds in a classic old-school kind of way. Thank you so Bravo. much. Bravo. Thanks, dude. <laughs> All right, and then check out rappapa.com. It supports this whole thing here. Make sure, do you have a YouTube channel? Uh, I, I know you're I do. you it's and your small. brothers. It's yeah. small but mighty. And okay. the, yeah, there's a Brothers Land with YouTube okay. as well. Yeah. I'll put all those down in the links below. Make sure you sign up for this. All right, man. Thank you so much for coming by. Pleasure.